Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're returning. These are Anna's hands here. And she got this set for a little over four weeks ago. Um, no lifting. They all look good. Top coat great. No chipping. Woo woo. Uh, so I'm just going to show you guys removal while I talk. Oh, well, first of all, I did look at the nails from underneath to see how far her grow out had been because this is her third set. So I'm doing a full removal because we're getting ready to do her fourth set. I like to do it with my clients to trim down their natural length, check their nail health, and that kind of thing. So I will remove them with uh, cuti I'm sorry, <laughs> cuticle clippers with nail clippers uh, at the same angle that the nail is curved with the C-curve, basically. Now she did say that she had started feeling her hair get under her pinky, so I, I was just checking it here to see if there was any lifting before I started snipping. And I was not visually or physically able to see any lifting. So I think it was just that right at that point where she could get a hair under it. But that's what I was doing there. So I am using my Not Polish e-file. I'm using a um, four, course, four course safety barrel bit for removal. I have my e-file on a speed of 17. I have this video in real time for you guys. And I am using about a medium amount of pressure when the nail is thick and I start removal. As soon as I see my clear layer coming through the clear layer I laid to start the set to begin with, I start using only enough pressure on my bit for the bit to grab onto the acrylic. If you do nails, you know what I mean. Uh, as soon as that bit grabs onto the acrylic, you feel that resistance where you have to pull it. That is how much pressure I'm using. And you can see here, I'm just doing that. Uh, when the red is gone, I'm going to pause the video because I want you guys to see how much it looks like there's no acrylic left. Like, oh gosh, uh, I'm, I'm close to the natural nail with this bit. And you are, you've got to go slow, no pressure because this is a harsh bit. It's up at a high speed and you are very close to the natural nail, but there is way more acrylic than you think on here as far as removal goes. So as far as speed and heat goes, yeah, you, if you're seeing natural nail like this, you need to be very careful. But it doesn't look like there's much acrylic left on there. When we get out of the soap, soak off, I'm gonna show you what's actually left there. And also look how pretty her nails look. So she'd been soaking for, um, I'll tell you in a second, but I did use, I never do this, but I use a cuticle pusher to pull the remaining acrylic off to show you what an EMA soak off should look like, what the acrylic should look like when it comes off of the nail. There should be no stringiness, no gumminess. It should look a little crumbly like that. This is how I always take it off though. I get a clean paper towel and wipe it off. I don't use the cuticle pusher just ever to do that. This is quicker, easier. There's no scraping. Um, or possible damage or anything like that. Um, I'm gonna trim the nails and then I'm gonna file them just so that they're super nice and trim. And while I'm working on this hand, her other hand is soaking. So I'm never at a stop work. So when my, a client comes in for a removal, I do the removal, begin the removal like I just showed you. And that takes less than two minutes per finger. So that's taking about maybe eight minutes to do, to get to the stage where it's time to soak. So. She'll be soaking for eight to 10 minutes, possibly with the other hand. So that's enough time to get off the remaining acrylic. So when I'm done with this uh, prep, the other hand will be ready to come out. And actually it's ready to come out before that because I go into full prep on this hand while the other one is soaking. If that, I always say if that makes sense. Anyway, so I do have this in real time for you guys and I have it up much closer than usual because prep is so important, it's so key. And I, I'm usually a little bit farther back and I'm mostly explaining myself verbally during these st uh, steps. So I wanted you to see them up closer. So I was pushing the cuticle back, but actually the cuticle is the dead skin on your nail plate. So I was pushing her eponychium back and exposing more nail plate and the cuticle. Then I'm going in with the ball bit and I'm going to be removing any dead skin. Not all of it. I think I probably leave quite a bit 
but I just make it look nice. I don't like going with nippers. I just don't like it. So I get off what I can with this bit and I have it on a speed, I think seven or eight on my e-file and you can see it, it takes it off. Also, I want you guys to notice the red rings on her fingers. It looks like ring of fire. And if you weren't experienced or you didn't know, you might think, whoa, or at a first glance, even if you are experienced, but that's just her top coat and a little bit of acrylic. As soon as I start doing the removal with my sanding band, you'll see that's product and it'll come right off and her nails are gorgeous. So this bit I got from Kiera and I've never used it before on a client. I did use it on myself and I just wanted to go around the edges with this because I want to use my sanding band to remove the rest of the acrylic. When I first started doing nails, and, and I mean this time around, like when things have changed and been different, we've talked about this before, but I would get to this stage on my own nails where it's time to remove. And I really wouldn't be able to tell when I had gotten all the product off or what was product and what was my nail. So I wanted to show you guys at this angle and at this closeness, how you can tell. You can see here, since this acrylic is all white, this was the nail that was getting ready to lift on her. And so I think the acetone got under there much easier and made all this acrylic white. So I had to remove all of the acrylic on this nail. And I've also told you guys before, by the way, this is a Profiles Backstage Fine Sanding Band and I have my e-file on a speed of two. And I had this paused right here or had it paused right there to show you how this nail, the acrylic wasn't so white. It was easy to see like that there was product there, but once you start um, making it flush and filing it, it's hard to kind of see like, well, where do I stop? That's when you stop. That's what I ended up learning is when you can't really see it anymore, even if there's some there, that means it's flush. That means none of the, like when it's white is when it's ready to come up. Like if you take a set down and you haven't put it in acetone yet, you'll see that the acrylic is white. It's like around the edges. It's just chipping and white and flaky looking. That is what you need to remove. So when you get the acrylic looking like it, it does there, even if it's not all off, you can go ahead with application. With You could even put gel on, like go into a gel set. You, you do not need to remove all the product because if you can't see what you're doing or you can't really tell, you're going to be doing that on the natural nail. And you saw on that finger, I wouldn't say I left a lot on there, but I didn't need to go any further. And how do you tell when you're at that stage? Well, just when it's flush, when you can't see, it basically when it looks nice, and you can't see any white flakiness and it looks like natural nail. And I remember getting to that stage on my own nails and thinking, well, do I keep going like that? If, when I run my e-file across my finger, I feel like there's, there's product there, but I didn't need to keep going, you see. So the thumb here was, is a really good example also. See that pink came right off her nails, gorgeous under there. But do you see this really big patch of acrylic here? I must've put on a big old bead. <laughs> but I keep going because I still see areas around the edges. And each time I take my, this is another tip, each time you take your sanding band across it, if more little white bits appear. Now, I don't mean I don't know how to say this. The more you keep going, of course, more is going to come off. But the more you keep going, if it keeps chipping off and keeps leaving you more white flaky um, areas around the bead, you need to get you need to work on those spots until it looks like it naturally belongs there. I hope that's making sense. I hope I'm not saying anything that's wrong. But look how nice her nails look. So if again, as usual, this video goes by too fast for me to describe and I always feel like I'm stumbling over my words and I sound you know like an idiot <laughs> so bear with me after that I dusted off the nails and I'm going in with my young nails glue my favorite glue the only glue I use brush on love it it glues and I have this in real time too so you can see how long you have to hold the tip there um, the way I place the tip uh, the sidewalls all of that these are Kara Sky the tips I showed you natural color the non i don't know i think they're non c-curve but they are a straight square in a natural color i only use it that little bit of glue that I, that you saw me put <clears throat> inside the well of the tip and because the nature of these tips well i think almost every tip has those wings up the side look how nice her nails are have those wings up the side that once the tip is securely on the nail i'll go back in with glue and really get it on because at this point not at this point, but the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to make that 
um, tip flush to her natural nail. So I'm going to get rid of all those parts that are sticking up and I, I want as much tip to be adhered to her nail as possible. So I don't want to remove hardly any. So that's why I put more glue on. Also putting the glue on is going to leave like a shiny layer that I also have to remove because we don't want any shine. It's like Tao says, rubbing two mirrors together aren't going to stick. You put two shiny surfaces together, they're not going to stick. They're going to slide around or slide off. So I'm taking my Tammy Taylor 100 grit file and I'm going to just really gently, because I'm going to go in with my sanding band and do this much better, making flush her sidewalls and straightening the free edge. And when I get my sanding band, I'm just going to use the same sanding band I used to do her prep. And I'm going to keep it on a speed of one or two on my e-file. I say that because the e-file, if I had it on a four, it'd pull the tip off. Like it's a, it's a very powerful e-file. Definitely for a professional or use it very, very carefully. Um, I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a professional. I'm just saying it is a pro piece of equipment. It's four pros. So this is what I mentioned to you. I'm going to go and I'm going to make that the, the patch of glue that's shiny. I'm going to make it matte and I'm going to remove any little bits of the tip, the wings of the tip or any ridges uh, flat. And you'll see, and that's also why I have this in real time and also why I have it up close because you can really see what I'm doing. Usually this is at a distance when I'm recording. This is all still also in real time for you guys. When I get into the set, I will be back. All right, so I dusted off her fingers. I went in with some swipe and really got her nail plate nice and clean, got rid of all of the dusties. I went in with my Kiara Sky acrylic primer. While this hand was drying, I did the other hand, so I am ready to do my application now. I'm using Kiara Sky monomer, my Young Nails size eight brush, which is probably about a size five by now. <laughs> I've had it so long. And some acrylic cures, clear acrylic, my favorite. A small, small bead just to blend the uh, tip and also get, and make, make a new clear layer. So when I do the set, I can remove just like you saw me doing. And that's really, really why I use this clear layer. First of all, it creates a beautiful palette, prep is everything like I've said a million times. But again, it's so I have a clear layer to get down to. Now, had I been removing that set earlier and I only had the red on, I could have removed it. It would have been fine. It would have been clear to me what was acrylic and what needed to come off at Woody Woo. But it just would have been a much better chance that I would have dug into her natural now because when I was using that removal bit, I wouldn't have seen any white come through and known when the red was off until I was at her natural nail and so, and instead of when I was at her clear layer so hard to talk when this is going by fast all right so i'm gonna do she wanted she didn't really say she wanted a milk bath set what she said she wanted was a white acrylic or milky white one or the other with mylar she primarily predominantly wanted milky white with mylar lots of mylar every color i have packed in she wanted her nails to be really really dimensional and to catch light from every single angle that was what she wanted. And as we were going and talking about it and everything, I asked her, well, that sounds like milk bath nails, except for, you know, mylar instead of foil. So we were talking, getting the set made as far as designing it. And I told her it sounds like, like milk bath nails. And she said, oh, didn't you get those new flowers? Because I got those flowers from Claude by Cat. It's always hard for me to say that. Claude by Cat. And I love them and I haven't got to use them yet. I, I did use them on myself, but not on a client. Anyway, so she said, yeah, you could put one flower on each nail. 
which turned into two flowers on each nail because as she started picking through the, the flowers, as she started looking through them, because I told her, pick your colors, because I got a lot of them. I got so many different colors. They're so pretty. So she picked out her colors, and we picked out 20. She wanted two for each nail because she didn't really want it to be a flower set, remember? She wanted, like, a mylar set. So on the pinky, I only put one flower because that's all that was fitting, and she really loved these little wispy pieces. Uh, previously, I've not ever been able to use these wispy pieces on sets because the stem sticks up so much, number one. And number two, whenever you put a bead of clear or white or whatever color you're using to, to adhere the flower to the nail, those little wispy parts stick together. And now it looks like you have a stick on the nail. So you can't hardly ever get it to look like it's that wispy flared piece. But I figured it out. You just have to go in real small and wet. That's how you keep those little uh, pieces fanned out. Which, duh, right? Anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm packing in the Mylars. And what I thought to myself was, there are several things I would do different with this set if I did it again. Number one. You saw that what I'm doing, first of all, the pinky nail I did different. I thought when I started doing this pinky nail, first of all, I thought there was going to only be one flower on there. And I thought that nail was done. I also kind of encapsulated it. So I, I thought I was done with that nail. You'll see later I was not. But when I got to this nail, I thought, okay, I'm just going to put one really thin bead of white down on the nail. The rest of the nail is clear. So I'm not forming the nail with the Milky White. I am literally just giving a base. So see how I'm doing this right here? I'm just covering the nail, getting the Mylar in it because I have to encapsulate flowers. So that's gonna make the nail thick. Some of these flowers are, are large, like that one I just put on the ring finger. That's a really, you guys have seen those before. That one is pressed down as much as I've ever seen them pressed down, but usually they're much thicker. So even though that looks like not a very big flower, it was pretty freaking big. Um, and these nails aren't long. These flowers here, the one I just placed, placed that pink one, no trouble. They're literally just nothing. They, they, they're almost like a piece of glitter. They don't cause any issue for encapsulation. They're very thin. So anyway, I didn't think I needed to be perfect with my milky white application because it's just a base color. Plus, for milk bath, you're going to go in with a little more milky white on the top with some really, really wet beads, and you're going to add a little more. And I had to add clear. So I was getting on the smallest amount of acrylic I could get on and still cover the nail. Now, since I wasn't being perfect about it, you might see up in the top right corner of her nail that there are a, little, a couple little bare spots. And I also thought to myself, if that's not an issue because I will be sealing the cuticle and with acrylic, I mean, not during filing, I will be sealing the cuticle and put it and applying a cuticle bead of clear so that will have acrylic there it just won't be white well duh when you get to that part of the nail now you have a, like a what looks like even if you put clear there and you have your structure it looks like there's a piece missing so that was not smart I would have definitely gone very very well up into the cuticles and completely covered the nail instead of been um my primary focus, you guys, was just to try to not put too much acrylic on at this stage. So I wasn't paying attention to, I guess, that part of it. The other thing I would not have done, would not have done on a short square nail was stagger these flowers to where one is off to the right and one is off to the left because it looks cute that way. No. Your nail is going to be wide and weird looking, and they were. Uh, there was no way for me to get my side walls nice and narrow, which I talk about all the time. I like that my nails, and I mean my, my nails I do on my clients or myself, any nails I do, I like them to look like they're coming out of your finger. I like the side walls to be exactly the same width as the natural nail. I don't like them to be wide or bulky. Like, it's just really my pet peeve, bad, bad, bad. So, see here on the top right where there's no white acrylic? Because I was thinking, I just let me get some acrylic, like as if this were clear. Yeah, well, it's not clear, and it showed, so I had to fix that later. And what I fixed it with was, since I had clear acrylic up there, I just put on a little bit of milky white polish because the nail was there. But anyway, I don't think I showed that. Uh, so, yeah, this flower right in the center, no problem with my structure or my side walls. But the ones that were off to the side, I would have had to cut into them. And then literally have like a dry spot where there was no acrylic you know, during filing. 
So I would have definitely changed that. I had this application in one and a half times and because there was no acrylic on this nail, I say no acrylic because really, really you saw, I, I just been using like barely a medium bead to do the whole nail. I already knew I had to encapsulate everything very well. And I also had to build my whole entire nail with clear. So I went in pretty good with the clear when I was encapsulating and I knew the nails were going to be thick, but I wanted them to be a little thicker. Well, I wanted them to be thicker than they needed to be so that I could, gosh, it's so hard to put this in words. So I could then form the nail. I really don't know how to say this, I guess. I just wanted to shape from there. Like I just wanted to get everything. I wanted to, to shape and build my structure after it was done, if that makes sense, with the file. Tell me guys if you know what I mean, but yeah. See how this is a little bit off the free edge, kind of cute, it'll lay down flat. No, no, the nail's wide there. I never recover that, so annoying. So I'll let you guys watch. I'll jump back on if I have anything to say. Right, so finishing up here, she was looking at her nails and she asked me, can we just, can we just put that red flower on this pinky nail? I was like, oh, you know, are you sure? Cause I'm kind of done with that now. I actually even encapsulated it. It's gonna just make it really bulky. And she's like, no, I don't care. I really, really want that pop of red there. I'm like, okay, I, I didn't, I'm sorry. Like I didn't, I know we said two nails on each, two flowers on each nail, but I just didn't put one on here cause it just, once I put that, and I was explaining to her, it's going to make it wide and I'll have to cover the purple. And you're like, I'm sorry. I just thought it looked good with just the one and whatever. And she's like, no, just stick it on there. We'll figure it out. So that's why that's there. This nail, I put more than one flower just because I had so many more in the dish. And I asked her, hey, what, how did we miss? We counted out 20. How did we miss it? And she's like, put them on. So that's what's going on here. Right here, I was like, oh, I know what I can do. I can get this piece of plastic and lay this flower down. No, it was already dry. I wasn't gonna work, Jen. <laughs> yes, the acrylic I just put on there was wet, but it was dry under there. So anyway, this was just a mess. The nails, I think the nails came out beautiful. She loved them. I just wasn't a fan of the shape of some of them. Some of the, some of the fingers came out perfectly shaped and I just absolutely loved them, but some of them weren't. So I learned a couple lessons and I know for next time not to, just not to stagger them where they're off to the side at all. And I've done milk bath sets lots of times and I've done clear, clear flower sets many, 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 many times. So I don't know really why I did that. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm into capping here. And like I said, I'm going a little heavy handed with it and I'm going to fix it at the end. So I'll let you guys watch.
Hi guys, I'm back. So I just want you to look at this yummy bead right here. Look at this acrylic, this clear. Oh, I love it. So giveaway update. We have some entries. Thank you guys. And that's all I'm going to say. If you haven't entered and if you're interested, check it out. I hope you've been listening and I'm letting it go on just a little longer because I want to be fair to, there are a lot of loyals that I don't see entered yet. So I just feel like you guys haven't caught the video yet. So I'm going to give it a little more time.
All right, that was a lot of clear. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna take my Tammy Taylor. If the nails are dry, I'm ready to file. I'm taking my Tammy Taylor 100 and going at it. So I'm gonna do the sidewalls of the nail. This is where I started out. This, this is where I started. And I could just see this, this was just gonna be too much. So I get my e-file and do the e-filing first. And I am using the super long fluted barrel bit from Not Polish, which I'm obsessed with. So sharp. And you guys will see how sharp it is as we go here. I have my e-file on a speed of, I believe, between 8 and 11 here. I can't really remember. I think I might have cranked it up to 11. I'm pretty sure it was 11 because I knew I needed to de-bulk. I wasn't fine-tuning. I was de-bulking. So I will let you guys watch. You'll see as we go here, which nails are gonna have a good shape. Like they're just gonna be nice. And also I was happy that I didn't, not at all because this has happened to me before and probably it's happened to you. At one point or another, you just are trying to get the nail as trim as you can in exactly the shape you want it and you get into a flower or a piece of mylar. So it, it, I never got into any of the decorations while I was filing which was fantastic because I did get it as trim 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 as I could
All right, so done with the e-filing here and gonna go in with my file, do the free edges, any finish filing I need to do. And after that, it is wash your hands, top coat and cuticle oil, and we are done. I hope you guys enjoyed the set. I hope you learned something. And I thank you all for being here. See you all in the giveaway and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.